Welcome back. Now, on the 6th of September 2018, the largest democracy in the world took an iconic step by decriminalizing a 158-year-old colonial-era law categorizing homosexuality as a criminal offense in India. Although laws have changed for the better, negative attitudes towards the LGBTQI community unfortunately persist, with the majority of people in that country still living a life of discrimination, constantly worrying about how their choices may impact on their loved ones. Well, the iconic media house, The Times of India, launching an initiative on the International Day Against Homophobia to help carve out a mainstream space for members of the LGBTQI community to interact, share, collaborate and educate the entire Indian population. It's called the Times Out and Proud Initiative. Is it fine? It's good. For the world, I've always been there out. More of the women will get to know I'm alive, so yes, why not? <laughs> of yeah. course there is someone like that out there. Yeah. Haven't you watched Dil To Pagal Hai? Don't be stupid. <laughs> For everyone, there is one person. That's what Yash Chopra said and I believe him completely. We decided to go and stay together. My mother called him up and, and said, I have bought crockery and utensils for the Babu, hoping that he would get married. He doesn't understand anything about it. Why don't you come and choose what you want? My parents never knew a boy would sit like this, wearing makeup in front of the camera. They didn't know anything. Only thing which bothers me is that no one should say anything to my parents. Uh, I came out of the closet first to my mom. My dad has no idea about this yet. And I at times feel that if I tell him right now that you know what, I'm into women, he'll be like, tomorrow I'm coming tomorrow, I'm taking you back and let's get you married. As we approach our 15th year together, we want to thank our families and friends, straight and gay, for being by our side and making us feel like a normal couple. Our relationship has enriched us and made each of us a better version of ourselves. A 21-year-old human looking to rent a 2BHK apartment in a non-judgmental society to stay with my family and a partner if I find him in future. I want a peaceful space where I can be myself, step in and out with whoever I like and wear whatever I want to without any judgments. I'm a 36 year old Mumbai man looking for someone well settled and he should have hobbies and be passionate about them. And he should most certainly love cats. Dad, I like women. Though I know you dream otherwise for me. Uh, remember you told me not to live my life basis people's opinions. Uh, you will have grandkids. But I'd rather prefer her to have the baby. I'm bringing someone home for lunch, so be less excited and dad, just be calm. When data breaches and hacking make global headlines, many corporate companies assume that the threat is confined to the digital world. The truth is that sensitive information can be obtained in other ways as well. One of the most common is something called visual hacking. That's according to 3M, a company that advances awareness of privacy issues. I think there's a general misconception of what hacking is. Um, typically, individuals feel that hacking only happens within a cyberspace. There's also physical security factors that are also involved um, within hacking. So visual hacking speaks to those physical risks. Visual hacking, also known as shoulder surfing, occurs when an individual obtains information from device screens used by someone else. This can occur in public places or office environments. A lot of institutions are not taking the physical risk element within institutions into consideration. It's when you find unauthorized individuals who gain access to classified information through the use of the eyes. So in the past, you would find that individuals would rely on memory to remember what it is that they've seen. 
Nowadays, we have smart devices that are helping the process of a hack. So you would find an instance when an individual is walking past you and they can just quickly take a picture of confidential information and use it at a later stage. A global visual hacking experiment done in 2016 found that 91% of global visual hacking attempts were successful and that 27% of the hacked data could be classified as sensitive. This includes login credentials, classified documents and financial information. The experiment further found that 52% of the information was visually hacked from employee computer screens. A visual hack is a second, it's quick. You don't have to see a person standing behind you to take a picture and that's why there's so much risk around it and it's, I feel it's an issue that is under addressed because the general assumption is that you would know if somebody's looking over your unprotected screen, not in all cases. The key to prevention, says 3M, is education and vigilance. So you have colleagues who can snoop and look at your laptop, you have contractors who could be hired to actually find information from you. So if institutions would have privacy screens within the office space, they would be eliminating any possible risk of physical security threats or data breach. Another contributing factor is the proactiveness of IT departments within institutions where they are investing so much money in high technology, um, cyber security systems that are obviously preventing any kind of intrusion, but it's not always high tech considerations that should be considered. It should be an integrated approach that the risk management departments are considering. It should be physical security and the digital security that is put into place. And coming up on the program, an insurance company goes beyond the script in a bit to foster affinity for what is traditionally considered a grudge purchase.